the core of the lab leak hypothesis is that serial passaging, which is basically the acceleration of selection in the lab using either tissues or creatures. If it's tissues, it's in vitro. If it's creatures, it's in vivo, serial passaging, just uh, for those of you who have heard some of these terms, right? So yep. serial passaging. And it could, it could be both, right? You can sure. serial passage in tissues and then creatures. Uh, you could also... But what does that look like? Why don't we actually get a, get a description like on the table What it looks like is here. you force an infection of a creature and then you house... This is the, the, uh, the in, vi in vivo version. Mm -hmm. You house the creatures together such that they are very likely to transmit the virus to each other. So even if the virus totally sucks at this job, it occasionally jumps. And the ones that do jump, therefore, are the ones in the population of virus that have the characteristics that make them more likely to jump. So if you do this enough, what you get is the accumulation of those characteristics that make the thing better in, in jumping. And it's an exact analog for what takes place out in the world when viruses evolve on their own. And what you've just described is also that in vivo serial passage is a type of, it's a subset of gain-of-function research, right? Yes. The, the purpose is to add functionality to these things. And in fact, the thing it is best positioned to add functionality, the type of functionality it's best positioned to add is uh, transmissibility, right? Because mm -hmm. that's effectively what you've done is you keep asking it a transmissibility question rather than, for example, a how long can you last dormant on a surface question. Right. So SARS-CoV-1 uh was it was reservoir i don't know if that's how actually people say it but but lived in horseshoe bats yep and then <clears throat> we believe had a spillover event into civets was it it was palm civets palm civets and then from palm civets spilled over into humans palm civets which are cultivated and consumed by people okay and mers yep um similarly was in, I don't know what bats first, I, I think. I believe it's horseshoe bats, although I would have okay. to look that up I, to yeah. know for sure. Um, and then spilled over into camels. We think. We think. And then and then camels spilled over into humans. Now, none of those two stories, if they're true, don't involve any anthropogenic research, right? There's no, there's no human research there. But effectively, what selection is doing, to use the human-imposed language, is that virus is gaining function by spilling over into new hosts. And it is not going to gain the kind of function that we're talking about with regard to serial passage research as fast because it's not being forced as fast. But you could think of, for instance, that intermediate host in Mars being camels as, as gain-of-function camels. Right. And you could think of those intermediate host palm civets in SARS-CoV-1 as gain-of-function palm civets. And this week, Peter Daszak and the WHO Commission decided that um, we've gotten... And originally we thought we were being told it was maybe gain-of-function pangolins for SARS-CoV-2. So and I, I now wanna... we're being told... Ferret badgers. Yeah, uh, frozen ferret badgers, in fact. Um, we will get back to the frozen ferret badgers in a second. I want to put this in context, though, mm -hmm. okay? The thing, so it's interesting talking to people who are looking into the possibility of, of a lab leak. We differ on what we see as the most conspicuous piece of evidence that points to this not having been a natural spillover event. In part, those differences have to do with what are areas of expertise allow us to see most clearly. In part, it has to do with different Bayesian weightings. But the thing that jumps out to, to me and many others is the fact that the virus is so well adapted at the point that it first emerges, right? And this is conspicuous in a couple of different ways. One, um, it's very much better at jumping between people than you would expect and there is no diversity. There's very little diversity amongst the early samples. So what we do not have evidence of is a spillover event that took place in Wuhan, took months or years in order for some viral lineage to gain the capacity to jump well between people. And then suddenly we got a pandemic. We have no evidence of that. What we have is evidence of something that absolutely hit the ground running. 